Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, congratulations to TESOL Arabia for the affiliation, TESOL International Affiliation. Um, thank you for attending okay. this lesson. And uh, this is a little information about me. I'm based in the Saudi Arabia. And um, hello? Yeah, uh, I'm based in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and these are some of the associations that I'm part of, and now a uh, founding member of TESOL Arabia as well. So it's an honor to be here today. Um, so my presentation is about communities of practice. Um, so whether we're on Zoom or uh, at the Hayat Hotel, uh, Hayat Regency Hotel, we are part of a community of practice, and this is TESOL Arabia. Um, so I'm going to talk a little about communities of practice. So a community of practice um, is a group of people who share a passion or concern for something they do, and they learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. So a good example is, um, I'll give examples of TESOL International and TESOL Arabia, um, the conference book, um, uh, TESOL Arabia webinars, TESOL uh, Arabia professional development sessions, um, TESOL international events, uh, different uh, meetings, sessions that uh, take place. Um, these are, this is the interaction that takes place uh, in a community of practice. So the idea of a community of practice was proposed in the 1990s by Etienne Wegner, who was an educational theorist and a practitioner. So are you part of any community of practice? So if you can type in the chat box, if you're part of a community of practice, um, please uh, let me know in the chat box. Do they, do they have access to the chat box? Um, the people in the room do not. And the one oh, person here said no. She no didn't have problem. Any no problem. Sorry. So uh, that's all right. No problem. Thank you so much. So if uh, you are part of um, TESOL Arabia as a member, okay, we have uh, Niall TESOL. Yes, um, I'm a big fan of Niall TESOL as well. So Niall TESOL is a community of practice. Um, so yeah, we are part of communities of practice. If you're an educator, you're most probably part of a community of practice, whether you're aware of it or not. So, um, Wagner stated that we all learn on the job or at least in the specific context in uh, we operate within. And if you look at this diagram, you'll see um, the green circle in the middle. And here we have core participants, core members of communities of practice. And then we have uh, a big uh, red circle um, and there's a cross there and these are new members who join an association or a new learner and these are not as actively involved as the ones who are core members um so when we're just observing or just members but not um taking on active roles we engage with other members we learn and then gradually we start moving from the periphery to the core and um, I'm going to give some examples um, about myself and um, two of these communities of practice that I'm part of, which are TESOL International and TESOL Arabia. So um, I'm going to show the diagram and explain how we move from the uh, fringes to the core. So Wagner stated that communities of practice are everywhere and we're involved in them in different places, at work, at home. In some, we're core members, and in other, we are at the margins. So think, of, think about yourselves and think about which organization you're part of. Are you part of a community of practice? Um, uh, where are you active? And in some, you might be um, in the fringes. That's fine. And we're going to look at how we can move from these uh, in and out of a community of practice and throughout the different levels of a, of a community of practice as well. 
So um, we said that there were, we're not always consciously aware of our engagement. Uh, teachers in a meeting group, that is also a community of practice because they're discussing specific topics, they have a main goal, and we're going to look at what makes um, a group or a community, a community of practice. Um, the most common place is, is uh, the workplace, but not only that, but now we are not all together in a meeting room, but online, that is also a new kind of community of practice. Um, so they, they, they can be discussion groups, social media platforms, Twitter chats, and different places where educators can share information and share best practices. So these communities of practices are not all the same. They, some have names like TESOL Arabia or TESOL International, and some of them don't. If you have a, a bunch of teachers in the st staff room talking, they, there's no name for that. But, and some are formal, some are informal, some you have to register and join and um, get a membership card. Some of them you don't, so they're different. It's important to know that not everything called a community is a community of practice. For example, a neighborhood is a community, but it's not a community of practice. So what makes a community of practice? Three main points. Number one, we have to have a domain which is an area of shared interest and key issues. So at TESOL Arabia, what is our shared interest? What do we focus on? Teaching English language, right? So that is our domain. So there is a domain and everybody knows this domain and everyone has the same purpose. Community, relationships built through discussions, activities, learning. Um, I'm sure that a lot of the members who are face-to-face -face, um, are talking about uh, upcoming events around the world, um, people sharing business cards, collaborating. Um, and that's what I miss about face-to-face -face events, uh, the connection, the collaboration, the sharing of information, sharing of um, resources, and that is the community. Uh, practice, which is a body of knowledge, methods, stories, tools developed. If you go to the website, you'll find a lot of uh, the conference proceedings, you'll find abstracts, you'll find recordings of the um, events. So this is um, the body of knowledge that is shared. So now I'm going to talk about these things in a little more detail. So now we're going to talk about uh, Etienne Wegner who said communities of practice are a group of people who share a concern. And we're going to talk about that, which is our concern is the English language teaching uh, or a passion for something that they do. They learn how to do it better. And that is the practice. And uh, how do they learn better as they interact regularly? So I, I've been to many different conferences, some face-to-face -face and some of them more online. And at every different, every single event, I've learned something. There's always the opportunity to learn about a new conference, a new event, something, um, a new um, call for proposal somewhere. So there's always something that you learn at these, face -to at these events, whether they're face-to-face -face or online. Um, so the domain, a community of practice, like having a network of connections, but it's actually more than that. You're not only, you, it's not just, uh, names that you register or add to your Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, it's an identity defined by a shared domain of interest and key issues. So everyone has the same goal. Everyone's sharing, uh, different materials based on the, um, the aim of the community of practice. Members need to be committed to the domain and be competent. And that's what makes it different and unique. Um, um, uh, something very um, interesting, I'll just tell you something very funny about something that happened to me. Um, I'm always interested in joining different communities of practice. And uh, I was at work and one of my friends said, Hind, that's a fake, that's, that's, that's a fake job. That's not a real job. Um, why are you so excited about joining a, an organization and having a leadership role? That's a fake role. That's a fake job. So this is actually not a fake job because, and it shows how committed and dedicated people are because it's not paid. We don't get money. We're all volunteers. 
we are there for the same purpose. So that shows commitment and the commitment to the domain. And that is what makes us unique, all members uh, or, or all members of communities of practice. That is what makes us unique. So, um, and that was my response. I said, actually, people volunteer because they're passionate about it. They're spending their time, their money, effort, just to be part of that community and help everybody uh, learn and grow and share information. So that is what makes um, our communities unique. Um, the second thing is communities. Members collaborate. They have joint discussions. They share information ideas, they help and support each other, they build relationships. And a good example is the TESOL International Leadership Mentoring Program. So I was part of this uh, program in 2021. And that's a great opportunity uh, when you join Communities of Practice this is one of the opportunities. TESOL International has a program which is called the Mentoring uh, Program, Leadership Mentoring Program, where you get to co connect with past TESOL connects you and pairs you up with a past president of TESOL and you get to learn and work with that president for a whole year. So that is one of the resources and that builds relationship, relationships, you uh, get support and you learn a lot. Uh, the third one is the third characteristic is the practice. Members are practitioners who share resources, experience, stories, solutions. And I remember during the pandemic, when we were teaching online, I had so many questions and I learned so much, not from uh, work. I learned a lot about online tools and I learned so much more from my communities of practice and uh, different colleagues um, in these communities telling me about different apps, how to share you different options for sharing your screen um, so you can learn a lot from these uh, by being part of these communities of practice a body of knowledge methods stories and tools and it's an ongoing process so things are updated things are changed things are uh, changed based on the situation for example more online digital learning due to the pandemic so it's an ongoing process um, so there are lots of reasons why we join communities of practice. Do, do they have access now or still no access? Because I saw a few people typing responses in the chat um, box. The people who are on, the people who are on Zoom can uh, type into the chat box and then okay. for the lady in the room, I can type for her. Um, okay. Why do you think people join communities of practice? So why do you think people join community? Why do you join community? Why are you part of TESOL Arabia? Okay, I'll just put it on the screen. Okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. Professional development. Um, to get help from others in the field. Great. So I'm going to look at some more reasons why we join these communities of practice. So um, there are so many reasons uh, for joining communities of practice. Um, and this is how we get work done. So the three features that I'm going to talk about are mutual engagement, joint expertise, and shared repertoire. So mutual engagement is the amount and pattern of interaction among members of the community. It could be uh, communicating online, face-to-face, -face, uh, attending webinars, um, uh, discussion groups, um, so many different ways and so many methods, uh, d different means of interacting with uh, members of the community. And through this interaction, they shape the group's culture and its practices. Members establish norms, they relate to each other, and they develop supportive relationships. Joint expertise refers to the common purpose that binds them. So what binds us? English language teaching. So we have a shared understanding, a domain of practice, and um, they, we develop shared ways of engaging. We have different ways 
like now we have we're engaging online and we're, uh, people at the com convention uh, in Dubai face to face. So that is uh, very important to have different means of communicating and common interest shared repertoire, which is the continual development and maintenance of procedures. So we keep changing, we keep uh, evolving and growing. Um, the community builds its own set of resources and data and it's shared among different uh, members. Creating a support network, um, sharing knowledge, connecting with people. Um, if, like I couldn't travel, so this is a way, uh, connecting online, um, enable dialogue between members, sharing useful, sharing useful resources. And um, there are so many other reasons why we join these communities of practice. So now let's look at the different levels of participation. So we have different levels of, of participation. And uh, this is not only in communities of practice, but in all learning spaces. This is because involvement can produce learning in multiple ways, and the domain has different levels of relevance to different people. So um, TESOL Arabia, when I joined TESOL Arabia, um, I joined, that was my first conference, actually. My first community of practice was TESOL Arabia. And um, I was actually just curious about it, and I just wanted um, to know more about TESOL Arabia. So um, I wasn't very active at the beginning. So I was, an, uh, maybe I was a peripheral member back then. And the core members are the members who are um, the, the organizers, the uh, moderators, the um, uh, president and the vice president, the board. So we have different levels. And if you, you are in more than one community of practice, you might be a core member in one community of practice, and you might be a, an outsider in another one. So people move in and out of these categories over the lifetime of the community. Interaction and knowledge flows between them and create opportunities for learning. So as we said, you might meet someone at the convention, they'll talk to you about another conference, take your number, invite you to an event, and that's this interaction keeps people going and helps you learn. Um, and we need time and space to collaborate and communicate. That's why we have different events. We have uh, the online event, we have um, um, uh, webinars. So we need to we need time to be able to move from the uh, periphery to the core. We also need to accept different levels of participation. We can't expect everybody to be core, a core member. We can't expect everybody to be a beginner or to be a peripheral participant. People have different levels of interest, which translates to different levels of participation. So if you're interested in something or uh, a SIG or a specific committee, then you'll join that committee and then you'll start moving closer to the core. Um, so we said the core group and uh, at TESOL Arabia, the president, the, the, the organizing committee is the core member, a core group. TESOL International, we have the TESOL board of directors and the TESOL president, that is the core group. So a relatively small group of people who are very passionate about this or about the community and it, the heart, they're considered to be the heart. They charter, market, nurture and operate the community and they coordinate the leadership within the community. So uh, I'm gonna give you an example of the TESOL International Association and the different groups um, that we have. So the core member would be the board of directors. Active participants, I see them as uh, founders of professional learning networks and maybe chairs of um, communities of practice, TESOL communities of practice. So these are members who are recognized as practitioners and they define the community. They work closely with the core team um, to help shape the definition and direction of the community. So these are uh, leaders in their groups, in their professional councils. Then we have occasional participants. So someone who is a member of TESOL International or a member of TESOL Arabia, but is not always there. They're only there during the convention or during the TESOL, Inter TESOL Arabia conference. So they travel 
they they're members but they're not always as active as core members or active members and they participate when the topic is of special interest. There might be a TESOL Arabia webinar and they're, they're not attending all, T they don't attend all TESOL Arabia webinars, but the ones that are related to young learners, if that person is a young learner teacher. So um, those would be the occasional participants. And a good example is the ones who come and attend the TESOL uh, Arabia conference. Then we have peripheral participants who are in the outskirts. Um, they don't participate because maybe they're not, um, they, they doubt the validity of their contributions or they don't have time. They might be peripheral uh, participants at TESOL Arabia, but um, core members in um, another organization. And they, they attend, they attend uh, the conference, maybe, um, attend webinars, they register as members, but they um, they might be just newcomers. They're either, you know, they have another organization somewhere where they're leaders or presidents, or they might be newcomers and they're not as committed and not as interested in um, uh, doing that much. They might, and as we said, they might be active elsewhere and they carry the learning to their organizations. Um, and then our next uh, uh, group, outsiders or transactional participants. And they only interact, and they don't have to be members. And I see these as um, uh, people who come to advertise for their companies. Uh, it could be for books or materials or learning resources. So they're not members of, of TESOL Arabia and they're not really connected, but they're only there to provide a service. Um, uh, they interact to receive or provide a service. People who come and help uh, with the internet um, during uh, at the convention or at the TESOL conference. So they're there to receive or provide a service. Um, so if you think about your community of practice, what is your role in your community of practice? Can you type in your chat box and how would you describe yourself? Are you a core member? Are you a peripheral member? Um, so let's- uh, How would you describe yourself? So uh, I, 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 we have Niall Tiesel, uh, Rania. I know you're an, a core member of uh, Niall Tiesel. Let's see the chat box. Okay. Um, yeah, a mix. Yeah, exactly. Active member. Uh, um, okay. Uh, okay, Iman, can you tell us about your community of practice? Hello, and uh, <laughs> I also am a member, you know, of Nile Tissel, and I was a member of the organizing committee before, so, uh, but not anymore, not this year. All right, but uh, I, I consider myself to be an active member because I try as much as I can, you know, to participate, you know, and give presentations and attend, you know, uh, the conference. So I believe, you know, that I try as much as I can to benefit, you know, and benefit others as well. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you very much. You, so it's interesting how we are, um, we have different roles in different organizations. Um, and then we, you know, we move from the core, core, being core members. Um, for example, a president of an association is a core member. And then the following year after they finish their term, their term, they might retire and be a peripheral participant. So it's interesting how we move in and out of these uh, communities of practice. I think our time is almost up. Yes. Yeah. Okay.